Hello everyone, this is Sylvia from the International Students Office of Donghua University. Welcome to today's webinar and again, Happy New Year to all of you. This is one of our DHU Friday Talks, a live streaming which provides you the official information and guidance about applying to Donghua University. Joined together is my colleague, Ms. Francis, and she will help to answer your questions in the chat box. Today's presentation consists of the following four parts, which last for about one hour. We will leave enough time for Q&A so that your most concerned questions will be answered. Firstly, what kind of university Donghua University is? Why choosing Donghua University to pursue your postgraduate study? To answer these questions, let's see a few pictures together. In October 2023, the China Annual Conference for International Education released the global ranking of academic subjects. Among them, Donghua University claims the top position in textile and, and uh, textile science and engineering. This ranking is assessed based on criteria such as international academic awards, top academic achievements, high quality research output, research quality, and international collaborations. From this, you can easily know our strengths in textile engineering. Founded in 1951, Donghua University was formerly well known as China Textile University. But nowadays, Donghua University has developed into a comprehensive university that offers multiple disciplines in the field of management, humanities, science, and technology. Our academic achievements have found applications in areas such as aeronautics, military science, new material, architecture, and environmental protection. Donghua University is also one of the state key universities directly under the Ministry of Education of China. So to answer some of your first questions in short, yes, we are a public university in China. Here come some basic facts about Donghua University. Currently, we have over 2,200 faculty and staff, and we have near 25,000 students and their distributions in bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs can be seen from the screen. And we have about uh, 1,800 uh, 1, international students from uh, 112 countries which means Donghua University is really an international community that welcomes students from all over the world. Besides, we have more than 150 partnerships overseas. That means this is the place where some of the best researchers and professors in the country go to work. And that's great for you as a student, no matter in which program, here at Donghua, you will learn from professionals. Donghua University has two campuses, both of which has top of the line facilities. What you see now is the Yan'an Road campus. It is located in the heart of Shanghai, so the transportation is very convenient. From the photos here, you can see the teaching buildings, sports facilities, and library, the international students' apartment with cooking and washing facilities, as well as sufficient storing space. Students in this campus can experience a rich and colorful campus life, as well as urban life. The other campus is our Songjiang campus, located in the suburbs of Shanghai. 
programs offered on this campus are mainly in the field of engineering and technology. You can see the photos of this campus with good natural environment, state-of-the-art facilities for learning and doing experiments. Apart from this, Donghua University has very active international student associations, various clubs, and a powerful volunteer team. There are too many activities to mention them all, but as an international student, you are free to join any of them. Think of arts, sports, event organization, or cultural exchange. It's all possible here. So on the screen, there is our official WeChat account. You can scan the QR code to follow our WeChat account. Now, let's move to the second part and look into the postgraduate programs we offer. Our university now has 18 colleges with uh, 57 master's majors, including 15 programs taught in English. We offer 24 doctoral programs and most of them can be instructed in English. On this slide, I summarize some most popular English taught master's programs. The first two one, uh, the first two are offered on our Yang'an Road campus, while the rest are in our Songjiang campus. Those marks with the stars are newly opened in 2024. Although they are new established majors, they have strong teaching faculties and academic supports. You can scan the QR code on the screen to check the 15 programs and their introductions. Also, I will talk about this later in details. Here, I summarize some doctoral programs which were found attractive to applicants in the past few years. So, of course, textile engineering, material science, and engineering are two uh, key disciplines of Donghua University. You can also find programs such as uh, biological material science, material precession engineering. We also offer programs in the field of chemistry, such as uh, chemistry, textile chemistry, and dyeing and finishing engineering. For the field of environmental science, we offer environmental science and civil engineering. If your master's program is about computer science or information technology, you may be interested in our doctoral program, uh, such as control science and engineering, artificial intelligence, enterprise information system and engineering. If you are looking for the program related to business, yes, of course, we also offer doctoral program in business administration. So how to check the programs that we offer in Donghai University? I will show you by sharing the screen of our official website. Please wait a second. Okay, thanks for waiting. So if you type our official website address, english.dhu.edu.cn in your browser, you can find our English website. By clicking International Students in the navigation bar, you can find admission information. So on the left column, we summarize our programs based on different levels. For example, bachelor's programs, master's programs, and doctoral programs. So I will start from master's programs to show you at uh, uh, show you the example. By clicking master's programs, you can find related information. The first one is master's programs and key ap application information. There will be a chart that summarizes all the programs we offer, including the colleges, schools, it 
uh, it is hosted the specific majors, the teaching language and age limit, as well as application fee and tuition fee information. You can also click the PDF link to download this chart. But what I want to mention more is you are highly suggested to check this form. I will show you. Because from the name of the master's programs major, it would be uh, too general to understand what you will learn. But by downloading this form, although this one is in Chinese, you can uh, use some translation software or apps to understand the content. It will show you specifically the research field in each major. For example, I recently received inquiries for the programs in Masters of Business program in Applied Economics. The student is asking for uh, what if uh, he wants to apply for finance. So if you are reading this chart and understand the research field in this major, you can see uh, under applied economics, this major, it has four research field. And this will help you to design, to better design which major you choose. So that's why we suggest you not only check this chart for colleges and majors, but also download this Excel file to confirm the research directions and faculty information. Okay, so let's uh, go to doctoral programs. It's uh, almost the same. It will be another uh, chart to distinguish them. We make it like a green color. And you can also find the programs we offer for PhD levels. And similarly, you can find the Excel, Excel file to uh, help you back understand the research directions. Also, for those who want to apply for the English taught master's degrees, we summarize uh, 15 English taught programs uh, in this column. Uh, if you, you see those with PDF uh, marks, it means we have uploaded the specific information for this major and for the rest, we will uh, upload very soon. So I will use the one of civil engineering for an example. If you check the PDF file, you can find information about this major, including the research directions, the uh, study duration, and uh, curriculums, as well as supervisor information. So I will just quickly go through this PDF to help you understand how it is works, but you yourself can uh, download PDF files on your own when you checking the programs. For example, for this program, they summarize the main courses and the credits. They also provide the requirement for the final thesis or publications. By checking the supervisor information, you can find the professor's name and their research area. Also the contact email address.
we suggest you when you selecting the master's programs, you can uh, refer to this column to find information. Okay, so that is how you can find the specific information about the postgraduate uh, programs that we offer on our official website. Uh, let's go back to the PPT slides. So let's move to the scholarship information. As I understand that some of you are seeking for the study opportunity with the financial support. Here, we provide you the scholarship information that we offer in Donghai University. Generally speaking, there are two types of government scholarships. One is Chinese government scholarships. We call it in short CGS. And the other one is Shanghai government scholarships. Uh, for CGS, there are basically two categories and it means you apply through different channels. If you are applying through the dispatching authority in your home country, for example, the embassy or Confucius in institution, uh, then you need to contact them for the requirement and instruction. If you are applying to Donghai University directly, then um, there are two programs that you can apply for. The first one is high-level postgraduate program. For this one, uh, there's no restriction on the, on the postgraduate majors, which means no matter you are applying for the master's programs or the doctoral programs, you can all apply to the high-level postgraduate programs. For the Silk Road programs, on the other hand, it will um, be more related to the students from Belt and Road countries. And they have different application deadlines. Uh, for the Shanghai Government Scholarship, it is open to all levels of students, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. The application deadline is April 15. To understand the coverage of these uh, scholarships, you can also find information on our website. I will show you again. So when you go to all our official website, uh, by choosing different levels of programs, you can find the fees and scholarship information. Uh, taking master's program as an example, you will find information about application fee, tuition fee, and insurance fee here, and also the scholarship information. Uh, in short, I will tell you that there is basically no difference in the full scholarship of Chinese government scholarship and Shanghai government scholarship, because if you get the full scholarship, you will all get the waiver of tuition fee, waiver of medical insurance fee, waiver of uncompensed dormitory fee, and you will get monthly stipend. The monthly stipend will be different according to the level of your study. So for bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs, the monthly stipend will be slightly different. So you can check for each program. That is the case that if you get the full scholarships, um, but if you get only partial scholarships, it means you can get a few items of this coverage. For example, it is possible for you that you only get the tuition fee waiver while you yourself need to pay for the dormitory fee and uh, the living expense. That's possible, okay? Uh, and when you submit the application, you don't need to decide what kind of a scholarship you are applying to. You only need to select the scholarship and the university will decide the final scholarship that uh, you get. 
So uh, before I tell you the details about the required documents for applying to the scholarships, I will basically tell you the uh, process of application. So the first step is to check the program list as I show you just now to check if Donghai University offers the program that you want to apply for. Uh, and also confirm the eligibility uh, for this one. I will also show you uh, 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 in the next few minutes. After that, you need to comply, uh, complete the online application before the deadline. For postgraduate students, we highly suggest you to complete it before February 28th. Uh, after that, you need to check the email to pay for the application fee and send, uh, send supplementary documents. If you pass our review, you will be able to receive a pre-admission letter. With that one, you can use as a supporting document to apply for a CGS application, because I understand for uh, students who are applying for CGS category A or students who are applying for high-level postgraduate programs, a pre-admission letter is mandatory but uh, you need to complete the online application first and pass our review. Only after that will Donghai University be able to issue you the document. So as I just mentioned, when you are applying for this scholarship, you yourself doesn't need to decide what kind of uh, scholarship you are applying for. You just need to select source of funding as scholarships in the DHU application portal. In that way, we will know you are applying for the scholarships. And you are suggested, but not mandatory, to fill in the CGS and SGS serial numbers if you already complete the uh, application on their official website. Uh, so next, I will go to the most important part to int introduce the application materials for applying to Donghai University. Okay, now I will introduce the detailed document specifications for applying to Donghai University. Uh, I would kindly ask for your page, uh, uh, attention because uh, I will list the documents you need to submit as well as I will tell you some uh, uh, commonly misunderstandings because we already received some applications I with and we found some mistakes in uploading documents. I will use the doctoral programs as an example because uh, basically the documents we required for master's programs and doctoral programs are uh, quite similar. So if you are checking the website for application guide, you will find the specific information, including the study duration, application deadline, and most importantly, check your eligibility first. So for example, the age requirement. If you are applying for a doctoral program, pay attention to the age limit for both scholarship applications and self-funded applications. And of course, you need to have a certain level of educational background, which means to apply for a doctoral program, you need to have at least a master's degree or its equivalency. And we have the requirement for the language profic proficiency. If you are applying for a Chinese taught program in Donghai University, we require you to achieve HSK level five of 180 score or above. If you are applying for an English taught programs, then we require your English proficiency level to be equivalent to at least L6 or TOEFL 80. I will talk about this in details later. So first thing, all the applications is done on our Zhonghua University application portal, the address is admissions.dhu.edu.cn. So uh, to clarify it, firstly, we don't accept 
document submission via email. And secondly, we don't require you to post, uh, to deliver the hard copy to us. You don't need to. All of them are done online. Secondly, we require you to upload documents in PDF format. And documents needs to be either in Chinese or in English. If it is in your native language that is not in Chinese or in English, you need to notarize them and translate them into Chinese or English. For example, if you have the documents in French or in other language, you need to find the third party to translate and notarize it. For applicants applying for the design-related programs, you should upload the photo of your artworks. And the application fee is one of the steps of your application. Only after you complete the application fee payment, together with the document submission, will your ap application be completed. We have received a lot of uh, in inquiry that if they can pay the application fee after receive the admission result, or if they can pay the application fee upon enrollment, that the answer is no, because it is one of your application materials. The earlier you complete the document submission and application fee payment, uh, the earlier your application will enter the normal review channel, okay? So the first document you need to submit in the actual portal is your ID photo. It's your ID photo mentioned here. So uh, a common misunderstanding is that some of applicants upload their local ID card. Uh, my colleague, Ms. Francis, will show you a sample of the correct ID photo in the chat box. You can have a look. So the ID photo should be a front face photo an official one like what on your passport. It is not the photo of your ID card. You can now check the sample stand in the chat box. Okay, so that's what I want to clarify. Okay, so secondly is a valid passport. By valid, it means it should have at least six months of validity. So now it's January of 2024. If your passport is going to expire before uh, July of 2024, then you are suggested to renew your passport first and then make the application. If you are currently in China and have the visa, um, no matter a short-term uh, visa or the resident permit, you are required to upload the visa page in the application portal. Okay, so next is the requirement on your diploma and transcripts. To apply for a doctoral program, you are required to upload both bachelor's and master's diploma and transcripts. So uh, 
logically you can understand if you are only applying to the master's programs, you only need to apply, uh, submit the bachelor's diploma. So no need to submit your high school documents if you are applying to a postgraduate program, okay? I have received some uh, high school transcripts or like pre-engineering uh, proof for those who are applying for masters. That would be not, uh, no, no use, okay? For the requirement of diploma and transcripts, please note that they should be official documents issued by your home university, which means it should have either the official signature or the official stamp from your university. It cannot be an electronic version, such as uh, some students may take a screenshot of their online study portal to uh, show their academic uh, results. That is not acceptable. It must be issued with official signature and stamp. If you are currently in the final year of the study, and you may say, what uh, should I do in this case because I cannot get my official diploma yet? It is okay. You can submit a pre-graduation certificate uh, or, or we call pending certificate. So it should include the estimated date that you will graduate. And at the same time, you can submit the current transcripts you have. So uh, it should include the grades you have uh, till now, okay? Is that understandable? Also, we understand in some country, you can only get the provisional certificate because you need to wait until the official uh, ceremony uh, being held until you can get the official one. In that case, you can submit the provisional document at the application stage. But we remind you that upon the enrollment, you will still need to provide the official one. Okay. So, uh, talking about the language requirement, please pay attention. If you are applying for a Chinese taught programs, as we mentioned before, we require you to achieve HSK5. So some of you only have HSK1, HSK2, HSK3, that is not acceptable. But if you already have HSK3, it is possible for you to accept the application because uh, if you pass the review for the other aspects, there is possibility that we give you the language preparatory uh, study prior to a degree study, okay? So at least, at least you need to achieve HSK3. And if you are applying for an English taught programs, then we require you to achieve ELTS 6 or TOEFL 80. That is the requirement for English taught program. So you don't need to have any Chinese basis if you are applying for a totally English taught programs, okay? And some students are asking, they don't have these two kind of documents. What should they do? So there is another case, another document that we can accept. It is the medium of instruction or teaching medium certificate. For example, if you are uh, studying in China and your previous academic study is done in fully Chinese, you can provide a teaching medium certificate to prove that all the courses are taught in Chinese. In that case, you don't need to submit HSK. Similarly, if you are st uh, studying in your home country, 
for the English taught bachelor's or master's, and you are applying for a higher level, uh, say master's or doctoral, you can submit the teaching medium certificate to prove that, oh yes, my previous study is done in fully English. In that case, you don't need to submit ELTS or TOEFL. Is it understandable? Okay. Uh, to apply for the uh, uh, postgraduate programs, we require you to provide your CV. So the CV should include your educational experience as well as your working experience if applicable. You can also include your uh, awards, your personalities, uh, your publications in the CV, but most importantly, the CV needs to have the clear timeline or time duration and we prefer it to be written in format like from which year, which month to which year, which month you are doing what kind of things. So for example, from uh, 2012, June 2012, uh, sorry, to, from September 2012 to uh, June of 2016, I was doing my bachelor's study in this format with clear timeline, we will be able to understand your experience. And we remind that the gap between each experience should not exceed three months. So between each month, there could be like gaps um, because you may take a gap in finding jobs or something like that. We require the gap cannot exceed three months. Okay. Uh, the other one is research proposal. We found many applicants have difficulty in understanding this one. So for postgraduate students, please be aware that this one is not a simple personal statement. It's not a simple study plan to say why I like China, why I choose to study China, what about my personality. No, it's not. For postgraduate studies, you must provide an academic research proposal in the essay format. It should include the outline of your research topic. And for example, including uh, the literature review, including methodology, something like this, okay? It is a more academic document. It's not a simply uh, study plan. We don't have the uh, template or sample for it, but as a postgraduate student at this level, you should understand what kind of document you are required to provide. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, uh, there is one thing. For the doctoral applicants, you should find the supervisor to sign on your research proposal with the cover provided by Donghua University. Uh, I will show you. So this requirement is only for doctoral applicants, okay? Only for doctoral. So uh, by clicking the link, you can go to the download session. You can find templates of some documents. You can find the cover of research proposal. Uh, I will not download it, but I just show you. So it will be, the cover will be look like this. Please be aware to attach this cover to your research proposal and find your intended supervisors to sign here for you. Uh, 
about the intention supervisor, I will also talk to you later. So the cover is required for doctoral applicants, okay? Let's go back to the uh, document requirement. So the next documents are the recommendation letters. Recommendation letters. It should be uh, provided by uh, two different persons who know your uh, experience. For example, it can be the professors from your current university, or it can be from uh, like your company if you are currently working or doing an internship. Uh, a common mistake for the recommendation letter is that some of you didn't uh, ask them to give handwritten signature. We require the recommendation letters to have the handwritten signature of the person who write it for you. Also, we will suggest you to provide uh, an updated document because sometimes we receive the recommendation letters written on 2017. That is not a wrong document, but it is not preferred. So if possible, uh, provide updated documents. Uh, the next one is supervision intention letter. So no matter if you are applying for master's programs or a doctoral programs, a supervision intention letter is highly recommended to be submit. So it is not mandatory, but of course, to provide this document will enhance your uh, competitiveness, okay? Uh, I will show you. Uh, so on the column, no matter for master's or doctoral, you can find the guidance on applying for supervision intention letter. I will use this one for an example. So here we summarize the steps and tips on contacting supervisors. You are suggested to contact the supervisor and ask their approval on your supervision intention letter. So the first thing, of course, is to check the official website for different colleges to find the faculty information and their research areas and then to contact them with the uh, guidance we write here. So I will show you what the supervision intention letter looks like. So uh, it, you are suggested to fill in this part about your information. And for the rest part, it is should be filled in by the supervisors. So you are required to submit this document even if you cannot find a supervisor, okay? So even if you cannot find a supervisor, you can complete the, the first part and upload this document in your DHU application portal, okay? But again, those who have the supervi uh, supervision confirmation letter will be uh, largely favorite in the application, okay? So, so far we already received some ap applicants, they have found supervisors. Okay, so I will go back to the documents. Sorry, not this part. <clears throat> So the rest of the documents listed, including certificates of non-criminal conviction, 
and state of financial support. So for this one, you must submit a document issued by the official uh, public security authority in your home country. And it should be provided within six months. For the statement of financial support, we don't require you to, pro to provide bank statement. You don't have to. You just need to download the template and sign in. Please be aware to sign with handwritten signature of the sponsor. If you are applying for scholarships, then of course you need to uh, complete the CGS or SGS application on their official website and the uh, health check report. So this one, we also require you to provide within six months. Some students uh, provide those who did last year, uh, that is not acceptable. And we suggest if you have the specific items, for example, the X-ray result, uh, the blood test, test result, you can also attach it. Mm -hmm. So basically, these are all the documents we require. And there are two key words that we I would like to remind you. Uh, the first one is updated. We suggest you to provide the document as updated as possible. Uh, for example, if you graduate in in 10 years ago, it is, it is okay for you to submit the diploma issued 10 years ago, but you can provide like, for example, recommendation letters with, with an updated uh, a document. And the second word is authentic. This is really important because if you are found forging documents, we already found cases in forging language certificate, forging health, uh, health report, that will make your application invalid. So be honest in your application. That is the most important thing because the university has its resource to verify all the documents you have uploaded. Okay, so send authentic documents instead of forging the document. So on this screen, you can find our uh, uh, social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and TikTok. And of course, on the right corner, you can find our WeChat account.